Station, this is Houston on Space to Ground 2. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station, I am ready for the event. Governor Jay Inslee, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, can you hear me? This is Jay Inslee. Yes, sir, I have you loud and clear. How do you hear me? I hear you like a Richland bomber, which is good. I am so, it is such an honor to talk to uh, the Washingtonian with the highest uh, seat in the state this morning. It is a joy. How are you today? I'm great. It's such an honor to talk to you, sir. I was so surprised when I heard that you wanted to speak with me. Uh, and it's just a real special treat to get to talk to my home state of Washington. Well, you have made our state very proud, not just in this mission, but in your many missions where you've served our nation. And this is a thrill for me. I want you to know you're making me a very uh, uh, a prideful grandfather, too, because I've got a couple astronaut grandkids who are listening to this who want to follow in your footsteps. So thank you. Well, I would say thank you right back to the state of Washington. I was raised there from about seventh grade on, so I think I was 12 or 13 when we first moved to Washington. And um, it just had such an influence on me. I had an amazing experience at Richland High School, had fantastic teachers, mentors, and coaches, including my mom who coached me at Richland High for cross country and track. Um, so I wouldn't be where I am without those influences. Well, uh I appreciate you saying that. I've got a couple questions for you. I'm just dying to ask you, if I may. You served, I believe, on the USN Maine, one of our great submarines, and now you're in the space station. Which has the better view, the submarine or the space station? That's a tough call, but I think I'd say the view out of the cupola window up here on the space station beats any any view you can really find on Earth. However, I think there's something really special about the view out of a periscope in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and especially from the bridge where we drive the submarine when we're on the surface. I've seen some incredible things to include standing watch at night while we're on the surface uh, near Hawaii and saw more stars then than I think I've ever seen in my whole life because we were so far away from light pollution. There was bioluminescence in the water, glowing, making the submarine's whole glow as we move through the water. So I've had some incredible views on both vessels, that's for sure. Well, you know, it, it, that's a very interesting comment because you're suggesting that we can experience the cosmos on Earth as well as you are right now, and that maybe that's a pretty good insight that we can all enjoy it. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. I think we really have to pay attention to the world around us and our influence on it and its amazing influence on us. I have moments all the time and certainly every time I visit Washington, whether that's my family in the Seattle area or Lake Roosevelt near Spokane or my parents in the Tri-Cities, where I'm just in awe of the amazing beauty of our natural environment. I even, right before my flight um, in July, I had a chance to go home and visit my family and we spent some time on Lake Roosevelt and I remember staying standing on this cliff face uh, where we had sort of scrambled up on the rocks um, in the lake, this granite rock with the warm ro wa rock warming my back and looking out on these beautiful vistas of our gorgeous state and just thinking to myself, Earth is the best planet. Uh, so I would encourage everyone to take moments like that to enjoy the world around them. Well, we appreciate it. We're working to protect that Earth here in Washington. We've been working to reduce the impact of climate change and reduce carbon pollution to try to take care of our little home planet. 
Do you have any feelings about that with being in space? Does that mean more or the same? Or what do you think of all that? Absolutely. I think that is so important for us to be thinking about. And it really brings me so much hope that our leaders like you are talking about that so consistently. Um, I studied nuclear engineering in graduate school because I was interested in climate change and un trying oh. to understand what solutions would be important for our energy future. And of course, renewables, like you mentioned, and that you've worked on, sir, so important. Solar, wind, hydro, really, really important. Um, but I was interested in next generation nuclear reactor technology, how we could make that technology safer for future generations, how we could help the fuel cycles be more efficient and easier to manage on the back end. Um, and so I, I think looking out the window up here, you would be amazed how thin our atmosphere is. You can actually mm -hmm. see it. You see the surface of the earth and especially at night, there's this sort of burnt orange glow the edge of the atmosphere oh. and it's just paper thin it's amazing to recognize how fragile that is and how what a careful balance we need to maintain and i think we need to be really conscious of what we're doing as the human race to affect that future for the generations that come after us well i cannot think of a more eloquent and knowledgeable spokesperson on this than you so i want to thank you for those, those views just so you'll know, we are working on this in Washington State. I'm proposing some additional laws this year to reduce carbon pollution. And uh, if I may, I will quote you about how thin and precious our atmosphere is. I think people will listen to you. Yeah, absolutely, sir. We were actually just talking, a few of uh, my crewmates and I, the other day about everything human beings need to survive. And the most important thing is the air we breathe, the ability to breathe clean air. And I think thinking about it in those terms and looking down at the planet from up here, you see how important it is for us to be paying attention to that now. Well, thank you so much. A uh, couple more questions. What, tell us about experiments you're running up there. What, what kind of experiments will you be running? We have over 350 science experiments going on up here just during our six month mission. So it's almost hard to keep track of all the things we do, but in broad categories, we're doing a lot of really interesting medical research where we're the subjects actually, oh. where they're trying to understand the effects of microgravity on our body, both to plan for future missions that are longer duration and further from earth than we've ever been before. And also understand diseases and disorders on the ground and develop new treatments and medications for things like muscular dystrophy, various conditions in the eyes. Um, we also are doing some really awesome fundamental research up here. We're trying to understand how liquids uh, boil and condense. So we have a really cool experiment going on that we're just setting up now to, that could help us design boilers and heat exchangers that work better on Earth, but also could work in reduced uh, gravity environments. Uh, so those are just a couple examples of the amazing things we're doing. We're also doing technology demonstrations demonstrations to help our future space missions. We live pretty efficiently up here. We recycle our resources, we make clean air, we make water out of the waste that comes out of our bodies even. Um, but we're trying to understand how we can do that even more efficiently so that we're in even remote, more remote places like on the surface of the moon or eventually on a trip to or on the surface of Mars, we're able to stay alive and kind of maximize all the resources. And that could also get fed back into the resources we're talking about on Earth. We have a lot of limited natural resources is, and we might figure out better ways to do that on our home planet as well. Well, it just is amazing how the research you do in space can be used right in our homes, in our hometowns, in our neighborhoods. We just love the mission that you're involved. We know it, we know it's going to help people down on Earth, so we just appreciate it. We're glad you're solar powered up there, too. You're showing solar power works in, in your space station. One more question, what would you advise young people who would like to aspire to what you're doing? What would you advise them? I think the most important thing you can do is find things that you're passionate about. It's mm -hmm. easy to look up an astronaut's bio or listen to someone like me talk and think, oh, I need to do all the things that person did in order to become an astronaut. And you couldn't be further mm -hmm. from the truth. The only thing you have to do to become an astronaut is have a degree in STEM. But besides that, you need to just learn how to work on teams and care about making a contribution, wanting to serve and 
learn how to work in expeditionary environments. And so for me, I think along the way, I never, when I was a kid, I didn't think that I would ever become an astronaut. It wasn't something I specifically dreamed of doing because I don't think it ever occurred to me that that might be a thing that was possible. But I always found the things that I liked and that would challenge me. Um, doing hard things, is actually pretty fun when you enjoy them, when you're passionate about them, and when you see the growth they're bringing to you. So whether that's what I studied when I studied engineering or choosing to serve in the Navy, it was always the things that I thought would develop me the most and that I would enjoy doing and that I would do with a fantastic team that would support me. So I would say focus on the things you're passionate about and you'll be amazed where they take you. Well, I really appreciate that. And I think you are inspiring a lot of people right now for what you're doing. I know you're going to continue in your next missions. How long, when will you be uh, returning home here to the home planet? When will that be? Uh, we're set to head home sometime in late April, the, making it about wow. a six month mission for us. Um, mm -hmm. And certainly when I come home, I hope to come home to the state of Washington. My whole family's in Washington right now for Christmas. Uh, they'll be spending it in the Seattle area. Um, so I'm hoping to get to visit my home state and I miss everybody down there. Um, so hi to all my Washington friends. Well, I know they'll, they'll look forward to hearing your tales. When you do come home, I think you and your family, I would sure be honored if you can come visit us in Olympia. I, I hope you can come to see the governor's office and uh, maybe regale us with tales of space. I hope you could. Uh, I hope you could join us for lunch sometime. Is that possible? I will definitely take you up on that, sir. It would be an extreme honor to meet you in person and to spend some time with you. Well, you might have to meet my grandkids too, but uh, they're kind of fun to hang around. So I will look forward to that. I hope you will thank your family for their contribution. Your mom and dad who raised a great scientist, sailor, uh, your, your immediate family. Uh, I'll look forward to meeting them, I hope so too. So please thank them for allowing you to go on this journey. I will pass that along, sir, and I would love to meet your grandkids. So we'll, we'll definitely <laughs> have to set something up when I'm back on the planet. Very well. Well, this has been a, the highlight of my governorship. Uh, both uh, from a mileage standpoint and an inspiration standpoint. So thanks for this. It's been an absolute treat. Thank NASA, too, for allowing this. And good luck, uh, as they say in the Navy, uh, fair wind and following seas. Thank you so much, sir, and thank you for all you're doing to serve our beautiful state. Well, you're helping us keep it beautiful. Take care. Happy holidays. Enjoy that holiday dinner. I hope you get some Happy extra Happy holidays to you as well, sir. <laughs> Take care. Adios. Thank you, sir. It'll, it'll be here soon on our cargo vehicle that's on its way up right now. So right. we're going to be all set for Christmas. <laughs> all right. That's great. <laughs> OK, take care. How are we doing? Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you to uh, Washington State Governor Jay Inslee. Station, we're now resuming operational audio communications.